Today, I will talk about why I feel achievements and trophies in games, the achievements and trophy systems that you have on Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, that was introduced with the Xbox 360. You all know what I'm talking about, right? This whole system. I want to talk about why I feel personally, in my estimation, from my perspective, analyzing the evidence that is available to me, uh, <laughs> why I feel it is overall a detriment to gaming. And it's, been, it's something that I've been going on about for, like, I mean, I don't want to say for a while. I, I've, I've talked about it before a, a bunch of times. Um, not really like in one consolidated sort of uh, organized place. That's not to say that this will be especially organized, knowing me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, I've been thinking about it again recently a lot. Um, because Sony recently uh, released a video revealing the user experience for the PlayStation 5. Um, I'm not going to talk about that too much today. Uh, I think I want to wait. Like, I'm, I'm getting a PS5 at launch. I've already kind of, like, uh, explained my reasons in the next-gen hype check video that I did. Uh, so you can check that out. Uh... Uh, but yeah, overall, so yeah, once I get a PS5, I'm probably gonna talk about it more once I actually have my hands on it, because like, right now it's just kind of pointless to talk about it, right? Uh, I will say, it looks promising so far. Um, a lot of the social features, uh, I think are very ambitious and like, pretty impressive technically that they just got it working so smoothly and like, I mean, if you just remember, the Xbox One had a snapping feature when it launched and it was just so shit. And, uh, um, just seeing Sony, like, use the tech that they have now and do it, like, properly, I think that's kind of cool. At the same time, probably not something I'm gonna use at all. Um, I think the main thing I'm happy about is that it just does not assault your eyes anymore, like the PS4's UI. It's a lot more, uh, the color schemes are, like, a lot more muted. Um, I think just, like... The whole screen not being cluttered with icons, to me, is very pleasant. Um, and I do, like, I'll say this as, like, someone... <laughs> I like just focusing on the games and, like, seeing my games and shit. Um, but I do think there has to be a better way to organize them than just filling your screen with icons everywhere. Um, like it kind of is on the Xbox right now. I do like the Switch approach, you know, that... I don't know, it's just something... I mean, having the simple row, right? Uh, is one thing, but then when you're in the library on the Switch, something about it just feels a little bit more organized. Um, I feel like, I feel like spreading it out over the whole width of the screen is a mistake because obviously your eyes they can only like focus on like one column, kind of, you know. Um, uh, that's why. Um, I mean, Xbox generally like gives you a lot of options to organize. I think that's cool. I don't know. Uh, mostly, I just like the home screen is not full of fucking icons. Um, though I do, I do see that there's, like, some accessibility concerns with, like, icons being too small and stuff. I, personally, I think it's probably gonna be fine, uh, once the console's out, like, because PS4 just has a lot of accessibility features already. I th actually, does it? I don't even know. Maybe I'm getting things mixed up because the Xbox can, like, it lets you, like, magnify stuff. And maybe I'm... Assuming that's available on PlayStation, even though it's not. Maybe I'm totally wrong on that, yeah. Um, just like the fact that the the icon that you're hovering on um, sort of coats the entire screen with that game or whatever, um, I think makes the icons being small kind of a non-issue because like the whole background is the icon, right? So you kind of see where you are anyway. Um, and yeah, I was using my Xbox again today a little bit. Uh, and they actually updated the UI to make it, like, a little smoother and, like, just cleaner looking. Uh, with rounded edges, and I really like that shit. Uh, but it's still very cluttered. There's still a lot of shit on the screen. Uh, and I'm not that big of a fan of that. Um, so yeah, I blah. Said I was not gonna talk about the UI, then ended up talking about it for five minutes. Anyway, <laughs> the thing that was interesting to me, um, in, like, kind of a negative way, is that... Uh, this card system that they had, you open up the guide with the PlayStation button, 
um, sorry, uh, the control center. That's what they call it. It's not It's not just the ripoff of the Xbox 360 guide. It's the control center. Um, it has, you know, your fucking just default important features at the bottom, uh, which is nice. So you can completely ignore the cards, right? Um, I do, I do hope generally the cards that there's some kind of customization that I can say, oh, every card related to trophies. I just do not want to see that. I don't care about it. I, th I think if they let me do that, it's like ideal. Uh, then I don't have a problem with it at all. Even right now, probably pretty easy to ignore. Um, either way though, there are cards, uh, very sort of integrated into the trophy system for every game. And they showed it with Sackboy. Uh, the set fucking Sackboy game that's coming out at launch, um, where they give you um, an estimate, sort of how close you are to getting this achievement, and then also how much time you will need, and then they immediately suggest like all these hints and stuff, like they they can give you video hints and shit. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. <clears throat> well, actually, no, that that was not my reaction. Actually, so okay, I guess that's cool for those for people who care about it, and I guess it doesn't really affect me, but just like, just like the mentality of it was like amazing to me. You know, just the thinking behind it, that wow, we wanna optimize our playtime so bad in this like really soulless calculated fucking way that we now have minutes to fucking next dopamine rush estimates like that we clutter our whole screen with that kind of shit it's like they're really they're not even disguising anymore how fucking hollow and just kind of <laughs> like uh, how the fuck do i uh, like how do i mm, see this whole thing right just seeing the nature of the achievement system sort of exposed exposed like that just in clear fucking user interface elements that oh this fucking completely meaningless thing it will take you 10 minutes to do it uh why not watch a video to make it even faster just like the juxtaposition of that was so insane to my mind that i just couldn't help but think about achievements again and just why i don't like them and why i think overall they're not just they are a detriment, but also they have been a detriment to gaming. And they have had a strong effect on gaming, I think, honestly. And I feel like the problem that I have is that I feel like every time I talk about this, a lot of my specific examples kind of get lost. And people, <laughs> people have a way on the internet where they will like your larger point is super fucking obvious, but instead of just acknowledging that point, they will instead poke every fucking little hole possible into like just tiny edge case examples that come up, you know? Like instead of, it's, that's the thing, every time I tweet about achievements, I feel like, oh, this perspective should be so understandable, right? And then I still, my mentions just get flooded, right? And I, I feel like if you actually understood what I was saying, like you might still disagree with me, but then you should at least feel that there's no fucking reason to respond. <clears throat> because I think my perspective is like, and I'm gonna explain what the perspective is in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I think that perspective is really valid. And I think, and I think even if you disagree with that perspective, it's still worth thinking about, hopefully. Um, and I'm gonna explain what the fuck I'm talking about. So, just to back up, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Achievement, uh, is like, it's this external list of things, of tasks, let's say it that way. Um, where every time you can, like, you have this list of tasks, and then every task is attached to an achievement. So you complete the task, you get the achievement, the achievement is represented as, um, uh, some kind of... Uh, you know, some some form of like points. Uh, in in PlayStation's case, it's like uh, trophies of different values, so bronze, silver, um, 
gold, and then platinum finally. Um, and then with Xbox, you have just achievements with different number values, right? And then those values add to your overall profile. Um, and then also every achievement has like a little fucking picture, right? And then you can go to people's profiles, uh, and even when you don't own the game, you can see what games they've played <clears throat> and how many achievements they have. Um, or like what achievements they, they got, right? That's the basic idea. <clears throat> so like, I think, um, interesting angle to look at is, uh, the PS3 launched without any kind of achievement system and they added it after the fact, right? Uh, and, uh, there's a number of games that used to not have achievements that they added later on top, uh, with a patch. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid 4 is one example. I think, I mean, the most famous example that I can think of is Uncharted, um, the first one. By the time the second one came out, the, the trophies were, like, already kind of a well-established thing. Hang on, I spit on my screen like a fucking idiot. That's how you know it's gonna get heated when I'm spitting on my screen. See, I think actually, now I'm thinking about it, um, Uncharted internally had some kind of similar system, right? It was like just limited to that game and not something that you could see that other players could like uh, look at uh, via the online network. Um, and then I think they just translated that into trophies or something, which is like whatever, right? Um, I think there is a lot of scenarios where achievements just one-to-one -one represent stuff that's already in the game, right? Um, most obvious example... Um, oh, I mean, Uncharted is a good example, right? Where you can collect treasures. Uh, there's, like, treasures in every fucking level. Um, and then uh, every time you collect a certain number of treasures, you get an achievement, so... Collect your first one, achievement. Collect your, collect 10, achievement. I keep saying achievement, but it's trophies. Whatever, doesn't matter. It's all the same shit. Um, get all of them, another achievement, right? Um, uh, even more obvious example would be um, a game like Bayonetta, right? Where uh, you already get um, rankings for every level, right? So, um, the game might just translate that into achievements where it's like, okay, uh, get pure platinum on stage one, stage two, stage three, blah. Uh, you could go even more basic and say, okay, complete stage one. That's an achievement. Um, so that way you're just, you're just like translating stuff that's already in the game into this external system that's like observable online. Uh, and I guess just the idea that I can keep up with my friends' progress, I guess that's kind of interesting, right? I think that's also relatively harmless. Um, just that as an idea, pretty innocent, pretty whatever. Um, but I also just beyond that, it is pretty pointless, right? Um, if it just represents shit that's already in the game. Um... Like, why do you need an extra, this extra acknowledgement from the achievement system, you know? Like, if the, if I, yeah, if I can get pure platinum trophies in Bayonetta, why do I need uh, an achievement sort of doubly confirming the same thing? It's, it's kind of weird, right? And, um, uh, so I feel like, just from my perspective, at best, Achievements are just that. They just kind of pointlessly um, reconfirm shit you already did or you would have done anyway. And um, I watched this video from Game Maker's Toolkit on, uh, on intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and rewards in games. And uh, in that video, there was, a, there was a, a clip from a podcast that Zach Barth did. Uh, Zach Barth, developer of games like Space Cam, Infinite Factory, these problem-solving games. And he made this point that I, I think is super telling already, right? Where the reason he started hating achievements is, is because it's way more arbitrary and way more simplistic 
than what you could actually put in the game, right? Um, I was like, when I when I uh, sort of can try to convey my dislike for achievements, people are people will always say, "Well, isn't it just the same thing as fucking pure plats and bayonetta? Like, if they, you just got an achievement for that, wouldn't that be like, woo? Like, why is that better?" Um, I think fundamentally that mentality misses the point kind of. I'm gonna explain what I mean by that in a little bit. But generally, to go off of Zach's point, um, the pure platinum, like, or just the ranking system Bayonetta is nuanced, right? In a way that an achievement system can just never be, right? You can see exactly how many common points you got. You can see how much damage you took. Um, uh, you can see how much time you took. That's like, uh, just such intricate metrics, and you can, if you, if you just look at that by itself, you can decide, okay, what do I care about, you know? Um, because, guess what, Bayonetta, uh, there are actually no rewards in the game for getting pure platinum. Like, for getting all pure platinum all stages. <clears throat> it's just this extra little bit of acknowledgement, right, that you did it super perfectly. But like the <clears throat> the only unlockable that's like tied to score at all in Bayonetta is uh, playing as John, um, <clears throat> which you can if you beat all the stages on normal with at least platinum. <clears throat> um, so just from that, if you just take the game sort of on its own terms, you will see oh. There is like no, there's nothing in the game saying, yeah, getting all the pure plats is like the point. You can make that decision for yourself, right? Um, and you have all the information to say for yourself, okay, what do I care about in the system? How deep do I want to get into this? Um, like, mm, that's the thing, if like, if the thing holding you back from pure platinum is like getting hit a couple times. Maybe you don't want to optimize the game that much, that you, uh, you know, that you want to beat it without getting hit, right? Um, maybe that's not what's fun to you about action games. Uh, because the game is designed in this way, and because you can, like, obviously there's a threshold, right? Um, you can, you can get like a way fucking higher combo than what the game would ever expect, or you can do it in ways uh, that or you can do it in ways that the game doesn't expect you to, right? You can uh, do it in ways that aren't necessarily optimal uh, or that are a little more interesting than what you would normally do. Um, because the system is just designed in this open-ended interesting way and, like, it gives you all the information, you have all the fucking freedom to, like, just interpret it, uh, sorry, interpret it in that way. And um, once you add the achievements at top, I feel like there's just much more, I said this on Twitter, like the way I phrased it was, um, it makes you focus on the shallowest aspects of every game, right? Um, I feel like once you add achievements, you get this impression, oh, the whole fucking, well, assuming Bayonetta had an achievement where the whole point was getting pure platinum, right? Uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't actually have that achievement. So you might say actually Bayonetta like implemented achievements well. <laughs> um, but it also kind of didn't, and I'm gonna explain why in a little bit. Um, let's let's assume Bayonetta had an achievement uh, that dictated, okay, you need to beat every stage and every difficulty with pure platinum. Uh, number one, it would just be like it would be so insanely hard for the average person that I think just based on that they would be encouraged to do it in like the cheesiest, least interesting way possible, in the most time optimal way possible. Um, because the point to them now is not anymore to to just see this whole system, like when I say the system, I mean the combat, the moves, the weapons, the scoring, the stages, the modes, everything. Uh, just, just to ch ch see all that shit and then decide, okay, this is what I care about. Now their goal is to get this achievement, right? And uh, like once you add this goal, it just 
makes you way more narrow-minded. And I'm gonna use myself an as an example and say that uh, back when I was 15, I actually did get all the achievements in Bayonetta. Uh, I think there is an achievement that says get platinum in all stages on normal, at least, right? Um, and <laughs> because I was seeing the achievements more than the game itself, that's what I care about. I just did it in the least, like, I just did it in the sloppiest, easiest way possible, you know? Uh, I didn't really try to get good at the game, I just tried to get this achievement. And then I stopped playing, right? Um, <laughs> and just like if, just like imagine how much different my perspective would have been had the achievement system not even existed, you know? Um, whereas again, opposite scenario, like I already said, if the game actually required more from you, I think you would still try to play it in a really optimal way, right? Um, whereas now, if, if the game does not have achievements at all, you just decide for yourself, okay, this is how much I want to get out of this, and this is the stuff that I find interesting. And obviously, see, this is the thing. For people who don't care about achievements, that shit doesn't matter, right? I've gotten to a point where it just doesn't matter anymore, where it doesn't really... In games that I like, it doesn't really affect the game design at all. Uh... I'm gonna talk more about this um, later in this video, but uh, generally, for me personally, it's not a problem, right? I've moved on from achievements. I do not give a fuck about them. I don't see them. I don't care about them. Um, but it is, to this day, it's still striking to me how, <laughs> just how easily manipulated people are by this stuff. And um, yeah, because the a common argument in favor of achievements, right? And I think Bayonetta is also a good example for this, is that, oh, without achievements, I wouldn't actually have done this, right? I wouldn't have explored this aspect of the game. And we're still, obviously, we're still talking about achievements sort of representing shit that's already in the game, right? Like, imagine... Yeah, like, imagine there is an achievement. Um for getting all the pure platinum main item. And uh, you might say, oh, I only tried it because of that achievement. I only went for that because of that achievement. And it actually made me uh, love the game even more. Which I think, <laughs> let's be honest, I think that's unlikely. I think most people will actually get frustrated. Because if you go into the game with that mindset, right, you're not actually looking to master it. You're just looking to optimize that fucking achievement. Um, uh, because there's so much shit that you, <laughs> it's a whole issue, right? I'm, I'm going to talk about it more. Let's, let's focus on this point. Um, uh, you might say, okay, make me love the game more, right? Which is fine, but also, holy shit, don't you think, don't you think that it's a little bit sad that you needed a soulless little PNG on your fucking Xbox profile or whatever to encourage you to do this thing. Isn't that like a little bit fucked up? Like just the, that's, this is the thing that people always cite as the biggest advantage of achievements, right? That they get you to do things that you otherwise wouldn't have tried. But doesn't that prove exactly my point? That, like, they can ba- Like, if they get you to do that, they can basically get you to do anything with just this little thing. Like, I, I just want people to think about how did I go from not being interested in this task to, like, doing it as if my life fucking depended on it. Depended on it, you know? Um... Uh, Just like, I feel like the point should be super obvious, right? But like, I don't understand why this is not scary to people, you know? Why this isn't like, a like, why this isn't more concerning for most people. 
because obviously the thing I'm gonna get to now <laughs> is that with less charitable example, right, examples, right? I'm saying with Bayonetta, oh, this really great, well-designed game, it can make you see it in the super narrow-minded and shallow way. That's obviously a danger. But like, look at games that are not <laughs> that well-designed and that don't respect your time. Um, like, the, the example that I always cite um, is uh, in Final Fantasy XV. Uh, you have the stat for like, like the explorer stats or something, and you raise it just by walking, right? And there's an achievement for raising it to the max level. And the thing is, just by playing the game normally, you're not going to do that, right? Just by playing the game normally, it's unlikely that you're actually going to reach the max level. So what a lot of people did is they rubber banded their controller to make Noctis just run in circles for for like a couple hours. And then that gives them the achievement, right? And like, <laughs> I've talked to my buddy Bjorn about this, who's probably gonna be listening to this and he, who's probably very upset right now. I'm sorry, no offense, dude. This is this all, uh, uh, what's the word? In in good spirit, I don't know. Um, anyway, <laughs> like <sighs> see, Bjorn, who who completed this task in this exact way, he said to me, "Well, it was the last thing, sort of standing between." getting 100% in the game and not getting 100%. So why not? Why not do it? And my response to that is, why do it? <laughs> you know? Like, the 100% does not mean anything. Getting the 100% doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, like, it doesn't even unlock anything in the game, right? If it unlocked something cool, then I could get it. But no, the only thing you get is the soulless little fucking JPEG on your profile. That doesn't really mean anything. I mean, I'm gonna go on a tiny bit of a tangent and say, on Twitter, I said, this doesn't actually foster deep relationships with games, right? Uh, this whole achievement system. And that's like the proof, right? Like, you didn't really do anything interesting or engaging or something that connected you more to the game. You just rubber banded your controller for a couple hours. You know, like think about the fact that you you thought about it, you used time on it, and then oh, like, isn't that weird? Isn't that fucking weird? And like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like assume that people who do this kind of stuff that they don't value their time because maybe that's like a little bit presumptuous of me. Maybe that's like a little bit. Uh, mean spirit of me to say that. I don't mean to offend. <laughs> but for me, just like, just thinking about the whole, like, the process of doing this and getting to that point is insane to me. You know? It's. I cannot fucking comprehend it. That. Like. The thing I really can't comprehend is that that's not concerning, right? That people don't think, like, that don't, people don't analyze this behavior and, like, don't think, hmm, maybe this is a problem. Maybe it's weird that I get so easily manipulated into doing stupid time-wasting bullshit that, um, just to raise a number, right? And, like, I say this as someone, I don't like cookie clickers, I don't like grinding in games. I do not give a shit about any of that stuff, right? Like, I do value my time. And, uh, I don't know, it's just, it just does not work with my brain at all. And I feel like... <laughs> again, not to call a Bjorn. Uh, but just, like, I've talked to him so many times about games where he, like, openly said to me, Yeah, 
just like my completionist tendencies ruined that game for me. Like I had way less fun with the game because I felt the need to like 100% it. But then, <laughs> that's why I don't understand like just being aware of that and then also saying, yeah, but I still like achievements. And like, like oh, I don't think this is a problem. Do you guys get what I mean? Do you, get, do you guys get what I'm like trying to convey here? Oh, it's like I mean, as you know, as someone who wants to be a game designer someday, it's like it's just so fucking evil, you know? Like, not respecting your player's time is like one of the most evil fucking things you can do as a designer. Wasting your player's time so willingly, I find that so contemptible. And like, um, we, so I'm gonna go to the next point now. Uh, I, th I really do think achievements are like part of the reason why we see we've seen such an increase in shitty meaningless filler content in games uh, just so many fucking open world games with meaningless fucking collectibles uh, like obviously there's a lot of fucking shit you can uh, sort of possible causes you can point out right like beyond for example side of yeah they Publishers don't want you to return games and stuff, and they, they just want to keep you attached to games longer, right? Makes sense. But I still don't, like, I th think saying <laughs> uh, achievements don't have something to do with that, like, at least to some extent, is a little bit, like, just, you're being a little bit, like, in denial, I think. Um, because, like, Obviously, as a developer, you have to you have to see that connection, right? That oh shit, we can do we can get players to do the stupidest bullshit, um, just through achievements, right? Like achievements are such an easy way to hide how fucking shitty and meaningless a lot of the content is, um, and that's why we're gonna fill games with that kind of content now, you know? And uh, see Mario Odyssey is a great fucking example, because that game, it doesn't even have, like, the Switch doesn't have achievements, right? But the game internally tracks everything you're doing on this fucking list, and it's like, you go to the same fucking places and just ground pound more fucking surfaces in every level to get more moons, and it's super fucking meaningless and shitty, but because it's on this fucking list, you're gonna do it. Isn't that fucked up? Like, just, like, even Nintendo have realized, oh shit, if we contextualize our tasks in this way, we can extend the playtime. Just, I, I don't want... And like... Ugh. And see, I really still think it makes you see the most, like, it makes you see games in just such a shallower way, right? You care so much more about just completing shit rather than actually playing. Um, I mean, <laughs> we're in an age where I feel like I I'll see a lot of sort of gamers, right, like, uh, that are kind of caught up, read the news, play a lot of games that come out. Um... They don't, pl they don't really have games that they play very regularly, right? They kind of just play a game, move on to the next. And I think that's totally fine, right? You should get as much out of a game as you want to. But I do think <laughs> just playing for the sake of playing is like a thing that's dangerously lost now, you know? Um, fuck. Ugh. Hang on. See, I, I just want to look through, like, some of the tweets that I already made about the subject and, like, some of the responses that I got to refresh myself a bit. And, um, man, like, one of the most common responses that I always get is, like, but what about S-Ranks? But what about Pure Plats? Is that not the same thing? I already explained some of the difference, right? Uh, that it's generally, like, it's, in Bayonetta, for example, it tends to be just way more nuanced and, like, it's just a much more accurate reflection of your skill and like you see it just in isolation um 
And so you just have a much more, just a completely different perspective on it, right? Uh, but then, in general, I think, <laughs> like, with the, like, DMC is such a great example, the DMC series, not the reboot, <laughs> specifically. Um, <laughs> DMC is such a great example for how people will, and like, I, th I see this with casual DMC fans a lot, right? People who don't really, like, who kind of like the series, but they don't really play it. Again, I hope this does not sound like a call-out. But, like, that they fetishize the idea of S-Ranks to the, like, because they don't actually really understand the point of the game. <laughs> like, the, the the ranking system in the It's No DMC games is not super deep. It's like, it's kind of just positive reinforcement, right? I, I mean, I don't really know what the design intent behind it is, right? Personally, um, I think if you focus so much on the S-Ranks, you kind of lose sight of what the game actually is. How many sick combos have you seen in DMC that, like, DMC4 specifically, that, like, ended with a B? You know? Uh, you, you master the game, or, like, you get deeper into it and you play it more and more and more because you find the mechanics fun, right? Because, um, not because there is, like, an arbitrary ceiling that the game wants you to hit. Um, it's because you enjoy the way the mechanics play off of each other. You enjoy seeing what you can do. You enjoy getting faster and faster and better and more precise at the game. You enjoy that, right? And the S ranks, like, it can be just that little bit of dopamine, dopamine rush. But it's not really the point, right? And, um, I feel like you can absolutely completely S-rank a DMC game and then still not really get it, right? And then still not really discover so many of the mechanical nuances. And I think you can be critical of that, right? I, th I would say, personally, my opinion is that maybe the S-ranks and the way they're implemented in DMC, they kind of make you lose sight of what's actually fun about the series, right? Because the thing is, I don't think DMC needs, like, a better scoring system. Um, because it's not Bayonetta, it's not Bayonetta, right? It's it's fun because it's just this crazy open sandbox, you can just do whatever you want, right? And everything kind of works. Bayonetta has, like, this balance of, okay, it's pretty sandboxy still, but has kind of specific requirements where that mean that you can literally just do everything, right? You can't just do whatever you want. Um, you kind of do have to finish combos. Um, uh, you kind of do have to do things in a little bit of an optimal way, right? In DMC, a lot of the point is like to just do things as needlessly stylishly as possible, right? That's what's kind of fun about the series. And I feel like having a more complicated scoring system would kind of defeat the point to a certain extent. Uh, so yeah. I think, like, that's the thing, because people know I like DMC, they think I love S-Ranks, and like, the S-Ranks are the whole point. No! <laughs> and that's how you see that, obviously, I'm focusing very specifically on achievements, right? But like, shallow reward systems and shallow incentives can be everywhere and they can come in a lot of forms, right? And I think it's like S ranks and DMC, they are an example of like people think that this is the whole point of the game. Like, just like how widely spread this whole idea is, I think proves my point, right? That S ranks are the whole point. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm, f but like, I'm focusing so specifically on achievements because it's a universal thing that applies to every game now, right? And, um, uh, and it's like, it's like everything I've been saying just distilled into one sort of design crutch, right? If, I don't know, man, like, uh, see, because you, you can't rationalize achievements to me better than this idea of, oh, they got me to do things I wouldn't have otherwise done, right? That's like really, and you can see your friends' progress, right? Those are the only sort of two points in favor of achievements, right? 
Uh, um. Yeah, uh, the thing with, like, seeing what your friends are up to, that's cool. I can totally get that. I'm not gonna knock that. Uh, and I don't know how to do achievements, like, better while still keeping that aspect of them, right? Um, I don't know. Uh, but I think this other point is the whole problem, right? That people are so insanely focused on the golds that they lose sight of actually playing games. That's concerning to me. That's really concerning. And um, like I said, I feel like we see generally a trend with the way people consume games. Uh, like saying consume is like gross to me. But with the way people experience games, that they uh, just boil it down to these just really shallow goals and these really shallow aspects and like treat everything as sort of the carrot on the stick and that's the whole point and then drop the game the moment that's really base desire is satisfied and uh we'll also yeah like if i had to <laughs> summarize my whole problem with achievements is like a they make you see games in a way shallow way and b they're designed to waste your time um like more often than not, they're designed to waste your time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna call it Beard again. Just like one really funny example, Beard, if you're listening in your Crash 4 stream, uh, you said, oh yeah, there's the modern and the retro mode. The retro mode has lives and the modern mode uh, doesn't. The modern mode just has infinite retries uh, at checkpoints. And then you said, yeah, I'm gonna do the retro mode because I'm sure there's like an achievement for it. And it's like, no, you said, and, and you said, yeah, it doesn't really make the game more fun or interesting. There's no real point to it, but like, uh, I'm just gonna fucking force myself through it because of the achievement, right? And that sounds funny, but like, God damn it, dude, is it not kind of sad? Like, is it not a little bit weird to like, just do this thing that you know is gonna use your time like, you know it's gonna take up more time, and what you get in the end is just a little fucking icon on your profile. Is that not fucking weird? Like, that's the thing, I mean... Whenever I talk to people over this, they don't really have a response to that. They say, yeah, with some games I, like, waste my time, but, like, uh, whatever. I just, I don't know. I don't know what the counter argument is here, you know? And um, again, like I said, like I've said a million times now probably, if, if you need that to encourage you to do things, I think you need to rethink the way you would look at games in general, you know? I think you should be able to like look at a game as a game and like not as a series of goals and to decide for yourself what you want to get out of it. Fucking the... Oh my god, the best fucking thing... On this whole subject... Uh, in the Game Maker's Toolkit video that I mentioned... Um, there was like this forum thread on her story... Um, where someone was asking, okay, what's the fucking point of the game? And then... Um, uh, someone responded, yeah, you just collect... Uh, as much information as you want, and then you stop one once you decide that you're satisfied. And then the person you know th that made the threat said, "How do I decide that I'm satisfied?" <laughs> it's like holy shit! That's exactly what I'm talking about, right? If you have that problem, you need to rethink your approach to games in general. I think, and that's why I think that's like a big reason why I think I just enjoy different kinds of games and like I enjoy games in different ways from like. A lot of people I know, right? Um, uh, I think a lot of people that I talk to, they don't really understand the way I play games, right? And why I like them and sort of the way I get into them. Um, I don't want to say that my way is the correct way, right? I don't think you need to get into every game super deep, right? Um, but I... I also don't think that achievements actually, like I said on Twitter already, 
they don't actually foster deep relationships with games. I think they do the exact opposite. They make you see games in a much shallower way. Um, and, um, oh, oh my God. I'm so, this is like, I'm sorry. This, this video is just where I bully beyond. <laughs> I feel so bad, but like, um, uh, he like, um, Bjorn, in your uh, PS5 video on the UI, you made this point that, oh yeah, if I can like pull up a YouTube walkthrough next to the game I'm playing so I can get all the collectibles, uh, that'd be awesome. Like, just have it next to the game. And I was just like sitting there thinking, dude, think about what you're doing. You look at a YouTube walkthrough and then you just follow it bit by bit to get all the collectibles, right? Isn't that kind of fucked up? Like that's, it's, it's not like you're doing anything interesting that way or like you're learning anything new about the game. You're literally, <laughs> like you're literally following this exact guide. Just the, the, the different person, like a different person already did the work for you. You just use your time to accomplish the same thing. Just so you have the number in your fucking profile. Like, oh, it make, honestly, it makes me so fucking angry. <laughs> oh, dude. I do not get it. I'm sorry. I do not fucking get it. And like, see, not, not just I don't get this behavior. I don't get why this is not something that more people like think about or like, you know, wh well, like why we don't consider that a problem. I don't know why this is not concerning to people. This kind of mentality. I, oh, there was like this one girl at like this old job that I used to do. And like, I was, she was like, she didn't seem like a big sort of, um, I don't want to say she didn't seem like a gamer because that's kind of weird, but like, um, she didn't seem like she was like super caught up with like the news and shit right on games um and that's like that's fine right that's one thing but also like she did not give a shit about games that didn't have trophies <laughs> that didn't have achievements um and she like just like seeing the way she optimized her playtime and like just like the disgusting form that this can take obviously beyond i was just want to say you're like a mild case of what i'm talking about right relatively <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, dunk on you too hard. I'm sorry, by the way. L I love you. Uh, hope you don't fucking, you know, uh, take offense at what I said. But just like, just seeing, just seeing someone like her was so disturbing to me. Like, and... <sighs> Obviously, you might say, oh, she, the, the alternative is that maybe she wouldn't play games at all, right? But maybe that would be better. <laughs> maybe that would be for the better. Like, I think the few good things that achievements can do uh, don't outweigh just how it ruins the discourse and how people look at games. Uh, I just want to click quickly clarify when I said uh, my old co co-worker her not playing games will be for the better. What I mean is that obviously, I feel it like, just from my perspective, it seemed like the way she was using her time, like it couldn't have been very enjoyable, right? Like it didn't seem um, like she actually had fun playing games. Like just the way she optimized, like I said, optimized her play time and just really just cared about these achievements. Um, it didn't seem like she got a lot out of games. She just got hooked on them on this really, like, you know, base level. Um, obviously, that's not, it's not of my business. Uh, but <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, sometimes, I mean, I always make this joke to people like, yeah, it's better that you're not playing video games. Honestly, it's better that you're not a gamer. Uh, being a gamer kind of sucks. It's not good. It's not recommended. Uh, obviously, I don't really mean that, right? I do think there's a lot of great experiences. There's a lot of great games that you might miss out on if you don't play games. Um, but yeah, like games can be a detriment to your life. I feel like, that. yeah, you know, that's like a good overall point. Yeah, I think people don't think enough about how games can be a detriment to your life. 
in general. Um, that's easy to forget when games are like your main hobby. Like they're, I mean, games are like my big passion, right? Um, and yet I realize, fuck man, I don't need to play everything. I don't need to play absolutely everything. Uh, and I need to, I need to be selective with how and with what games I play, even though I do um, play them like a lot of the time for kind of academic purposes, you know, just to understand the medium better. That does still doesn't mean I need to play absolutely everything and like that I need to fucking get 100% in every game, you know, even though it's super pointless and like waste my time. I think, yeah, we need to um, just signal the idea that games can absolutely waste your time and that we need to be like more conscious of that. We need to be um, we need to be more willing to just say no, you know, to games. Uh, yeah, that's just that clarification, right? I didn't, I didn't mean to say, oh, just because her way of enjoying games was different from the way I enjoy games. That's why I don't want her to play games. It's not like that. I'm just saying I get the personal impression that to her life, games might have been actually a detriment because of the way she was, like, conditioned to play them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, that's my take. That's my take on achievements. That's why I think, overall, they're a detriment to gaming. Um, this got really heated. I'm sorry for everyone, like, that I, uh, upset with this. I didn't mean to. Uh, I just, legitimately, I'm just concerned. <laughs> I'm just concerned, and I want to understand. And, um... I hope, at the very least, that people can, like... That's the thing, like, I just want people to take what I'm saying seriously, you know? I just want people to, like, listen to what I'm saying and, like, think, huh, you know what, I can kind of see what he's talking about. I can kind of see why this is concerning to him. You know? That, that's all I want. That's all I want. Okay? Uh, yeah, see, see you guys later. Uh, I'm... Next video I'm gonna record is, uh, actually, no, I'm gonna keep it a secret. I'm not gonna say it. Woo! Uh, I wanna make one quick addendum, um, <laughs> before I send this off. I recorded this last night and then I thought about it more. I'm like, oh, okay, there was, I think there's one point that I, um, where I repeated myself a lot, but, like, didn't really drill down the idea as much as I could've. And that's this, um, you know, I keep saying, oh, yeah, like, it conditions you, like, achievements condition you to look at games in a shallower way. Um, and they, yeah, they just nurse, I think, bad relationships with games, right? And um, I think a good example for that is all the shit that you see in the Mark Brown video, the Game Eric's Toolkit video that I mentioned, where basically he explains this idea that once you introduce, like, very specific, tiny gold, sort of piecemeal gold, um, and then once those stop coming, people don't know what the fuck to do, right? I already mentioned uh, some examples like that with her story, for example. Um, but yeah, um, the most striking one, obviously, obviously is the, is the example that he opens the video with where it's like, did I talk about this already? I don't know. I talked about it on Twitter for sure, but like, um, two groups of children, uh, both asked to draw pictures uh, group one is promised a reward, and group two is not. Um, and then subsequently, group one becomes way less interested in drawing once the, uh, rewards stop coming. And I think, <laughs> like, I think a lot of people just don't realize that that has also kind of happened to them, you know? That, like, they can't really have fun with games anymore unless there's, like, a drip feed of golds. And, I don't know, I think that's sad, and I think that's definitely a problem. I think it definitely... Honestly, I do really believe it lets it lets you enjoy games overall less. That the fact that you need to rely on gold so much. And, uh, again, I, I had, like, countless examples with just how achievements are uh, sort of the biggest fucking... Uh, permutation of that, I guess. Um, where, yeah, I, I mentioned this one co-worker that I had who just did not give a fuck about games unless, like, she could get, like, trophies in them. Um, 
I think there there is just a very logical through line, I think. And I think that through line, it's hard to deny, right? You can't say, oh, it doesn't exist. Like, it's not like this at all. Because we have the evidence to support it. And um, even, like, like, if you might be listening to this and you think, oh, I don't have this problem. I think, like, personally, I need to analyze my own behavior, right? Like, I think I've... That's the thing, ever since I sort of stopped caring about achievements, I got better and better and better about it every year, basically, that I just play games for the sake of playing them, you know? Um, I have so many games that I, like, just go back to very regu regularly, um, that I enjoy simply for the act of playing them and not just, you know, simply finishing them or, like, finishing goals. And I think that's just, in general, a healthier relationship with games. Um... Per that's my personal opinion, right? Uh, I think, <laughs> like, yeah, I guess I can't say, oh, like, the way I enjoy games is, like, objectively the correct way and everyone should should do it that way. But, like, I don't know. Um, I think, I, j I just wish it's something that people thought about more, you know? I guess that's my, my point. I think, yeah, like, if I think about just shit like Melee or DMC4, or Mario 64, like, just those kinds of games that I like, um, I feel like you're not really gonna get the appeal if you look for sort of short-term dopamine, right? Uh, I think if you... That's the thing, if you, if you, if you're super, like, into achievements, I'm... I have, honestly, the suspicion that you probably can't get into games like that, in that way. You know, I feel like when you're so conditioned to expect these rewards, then it really limits what kinds of games you can enjoy even. Honestly, I just, I, <laughs> as heated as I got, I really want to leave off on this, like, kind of encouraging note. It's like, just please think about your relationship to games and, like, um, think about how you, again, I hate saying consume, but, like, I guess that's the word, right? how you consume them. And, uh, think about what keeps you hooked. Like, should you... Isn't it better to, like, find more genuine and, like, less arbitrary and less fucking toxic, uh, incentives to keep playing? Um, I think the same thing, you know, when I... Like, that's the thing. It's, whenever I talk about achievements, people always go like, oh, but what about this, right? Like I already said, I think, in this video, uh, I don't think achievements are, like, the sole example of this, right? There's a lot of examples for the similar idea, but I think they're the most obvious example because they're so hollow, right? There's really nothing to them at all. It's just a picture and a number. And that alone is, like, enough to get people hooked. <clears throat> I think that's scary. <laughs> and um, just seeing all this gotcha shit, for example. Like... Gotcha, at least, like, I guess it's, it has, like, this super visceral, shallow fucking, like, oh, you get a fucking hot, uh, hot guy or hot girl, um, when you open a thing, um, th that's, like, a little bit cooler than an achievement, I guess, but, like, it's still really just, it's still really contemptible, you know, <laughs> just the way they hook you on games based on that shit. Um, and I'm not about it. I don't like it. Um, fuck, I should have listened to my mic audio before I started recording, because, like, uh, yesterday I had some problems, and then it was fine, but, like, well, I hope this recording is fine. Um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, hope I didn't offend. <laughs> if I did, I'm sorry. Uh, this is all really sort of, yeah, in good nature, in good spirit. Uh, uh, I really, I'm really just trying to express my genuine concern for this topic, and I hope, like, that's the thing, I just get frustrated because people always outright dismiss what I'm saying when it's about this. Like, people will always say, like, oh, this doesn't apply to me, <laughs> and, um, when, see, yeah, and, like, uh, when I talked about it on Twitter, right, I felt like I really hit a nerve with a lot of people. I got so many fucking notifications from so many different people who were disagreeing with me heavily. 
And I feel like I, I just hit that nerve super hard, even though I phrase it in a pretty A, harmless way, and B, in a way where I applied it to myself, first and foremost, right? I used myself as like a negative example for how bad my relationship was to achievements, right? Um, again, my Bayonetta example, I think is pretty telling. Um, like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I lost interest in Bayonetta once the rewards stopped coming, you know? Uh, and now, years later, where I don't care about those rewards so much, I enjoy Bayonetta way fucking more than I ever have. You know? Um, if that doesn't show you that there's, like, you know, kind of a difference, uh, with how you can approach games, then, uh, I don't know. Okay, but that's it. Yeah. See you!